What's up, guys? It is uh, Duck Jitsu coming live from my house. Some quarantine jujitsu. So, we're gonna get going. Uh, this match happened in Fight Island in fucking, you know, some island last week. It was crazy. Um, I have a Bellator fighter, Chris Linzioni, a uh, tough guy. I'm going to narrate, uh, fucking, uh, uh, narrate the five minute match. I'm gonna leave out the overtime, you know, because why I lost. Also, it happens to be. Like another, you know, double the time with the overtime. I'm going to pause it. It's going to be longer than five minutes. So this video would probably be 15, 20 minutes if I did the overtime. And frankly, you know, it was no submission in overtime. Uh, Chris was able to win on writing time really due to the first round. He got a two-minute hold. I started off fighting hard, taking a good angle. However... He got a good threat on the rear naked choke, kind of closed up a little bit once he was uh, sinking in some Dan Severin style RNCs. I had to respect it. I closed down a little bit. He got the two. Boom. I get my ride. Uh, 35 seconds. Not great. He ends up basing up, and I end up trying to grab his leg and do like a knee bar style variation from a standing position. I need to use uh, diagonal control. Should have switched it up to the other leg or broke him down with a power half. This essentially happened twice. Uh, once in the first round and once in the third round. Um, so, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Armbar position wasn't quite ready. He got out in like six, seven seconds. And I had two quick escapes. So, I'm just going to leave that part out. And now, we're going to get into the match. Boom. Should I let Chael commentate? I'm going to let him commentate. This gets hilarious. Afron taking on Chris Lencioni. Boom, you got my name right. Of course, known as Sunshine. So, working from this half butterfly guard with an angle trap, looking to uh, shoot to a Connie Basami reverse X position. Currently signed to Bellator. Boom. You know, I'm going to go back there and I'm going to. Do a little drawing here just to work my artistic side. Boom. So essentially from this position, Chris is doing a good job of... Boom. He was doing a good job of fighting... Uh, that's fucking terrible. <laughs> He's doing a good job on fighting my hand position. I did a good job of using one hand to essentially invert and get into my inside triangle position, I end up inverting to this backside position that I've been working on to try to hit it from 50-50 and essentially get the break with uh, one arm. So I go right here, palm to palm, uh, palm to palm on my first grip, and then I switch it over to a finger four grip, which was a strong grip. There was a little pop here, but, um, you know, Chris was able to clear the knee one hell of a competitor. Uh, he definitely was in some trouble, but he was willing to fight his way out. And I got the grip before I secured the leg position. Uh, definitely with higher level competitors, that that's the move. Uh, and I always try to get my, my leg second. Because it's harder to get a guy's leg or his heel exposed rather than get the actual leg entanglement. In my opinion. That's... Uh, I have more success when I get the heel, then I get the break versus the other way around. So here I'm working from this half guard. I'm able to off balance and get into double outside on the far side. Ideally, I should have a hip post. I go for like a finger four style grip. I should control that second leg and invert by try it pulling off a toe hold. And Chris gets right out again. Um, working from half guard position. It's actually kind of annoying with chill. I'm going to kill his commentary. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> so here, I'm working with that same foot grip. Uh, Chris is doing a good job. Grabbing the head. I'm using this cross frame to redirect him on my top side arm. He's hand fighting here, which he should be doing. And I end up having to let go of that ankle and getting back to a little bit more, uh, a little bit more defensive side on my frames. 
So again, I go on my cross frame underneath the armpit, trying to use some misdirection to get underneath his base. He's keeping his base heavy, sinking back, trying to get to my hips. He flattens me out here for a second. I get back to my side and back to my ankle grip. Let me uh, just highlight that really quick because I think that was how I was getting to his legs uh, for most of this match. So it's a nice little grip to play with. It's just generally working on the toe, which I should have been. I was working a little bit higher up, uh, just something for me to look at. Uh, most of the time you want to be at the end of the lever on the, the toe line rather than, than grab the heel, but you know whatever works. So that is how I was getting to his legs most of the time. Now let me get back to our roll. Boom. All right, so we're going. Have my knee shield. Get into double outside, try to invert the backside and get into my 50 50 game. He's able to stay secure. Here, he does a good job of just pulling my leg and getting my knee away from my hip. From here, immediately I go to my side. I'm working with double inside. He's working with a wrist grip and like my trap. He has a good amount of uh, back exposure and he's able to eventually get into a gift wrap position and get to my back. Unfortunately for me, but you know, Chris is a hell of a competitor. So it happens. Good competitors, you know, you gotta go from your offense into your defense, throwing up attacks, getting attacked, fucking getting cross face like this. It's fucking rough out here. So trying to belly me down and flatten me out here. I continue to rotate. I'm looking to control his wrist. And keep my hands high. Should be working a little, little bit farther down the wrist line with my right arm here. Eventually, Chris is able to get his arm back. And again, I bring it back in for defense. So let's see here. Thank goodness. Let me pause this really quick. Ah, uh, boom. Uh, we'll go back a little bit. Back a little bit. So one, two, boom. So he does this like old school rear naked choke. So you always want to fight that hand on top of the head. Generally, when you're shooting the rear naked choke, it would be ideal to bring this behind the neck. Um, definitely in MMA, it's a little bit harder to do. So Chris probably does have some finishes uh, finishing uh, this way. And he was getting a lot of pressure. Like he was getting a strangle, but he probably would have been able to finish me if he got his hand behind the head so as we continue I hand fight I look for top hand position and as soon as I get this I know he's not going to finish me so good thing for me wasn't able to get behind the head Let me take that off boom boom now boom working trying to rotate in this body triangle uh you know it's a difficult thing to do on you know longer legged opponent and you know a little bit bigger opponent too uh, it's never an easy thing to get out of the body triangle, but especially with this leg length, uh, he's giving me a hard time. He's keeping his leg contracted, he's hipping in, he's making it hard to move, and he's threatening uh, the rear naked chokes when I am rotating. So here I start to get some relief. We have the triangle on the bottom side. I'm going to start to fight this bottom hook here. So this is probably going to be my best attempt at escaping, I would imagine. Besides the hip in and belly down and being in a mount position with a body triangle, which is a strong controlled position to be in. He transitions for an S mount. I immediately invert right into a 50-50. And this is towards the end of the round. I'm going to pause it here. Uh, I am looking to extend this leg here. So for the 50-50 position, it is ideal for finishing to get uh, leg extension. So here, I do get one nice little attempt at it. It was right before the regulation, and he's able to get to my head, and he has a bent leg, so I'm probably not going to be able to get the finish. In this 50-50 position, you do want uh, leg extension. You can finish from there. Uh, it just isn't ideal. I do think I got a little, little air pop, but it's not a strong, reliable uh, finishing position against... Uh, you know, 
high level opponents like Chris. So this, I believe, is going to take us into the overtime. Uh, one hell of a match. My opponent was able to pull it off in OT. I'm just going to stop it there because we're going to keep this video reasonable. Not going to be 20 minutes. Let's see what's going to be. It's going to be 10 minutes probably. So going to keep it there. Don't need to do 10 minutes of commentary and some overtime rounds. But this is my video for the week, guys. At DuckJitsu on Instagram. Hit the subscribe for more narrative roles. See you guys next time.